As always, if you haven't done so yet, just make sure you pause the video first and try to answer the question on your own. It's going to be useful in order to find the point that is closest to 3 comma 0 and that also lies on the curve to first sketch the curve. And so we can do that perhaps by going back to basics and just making a little xy chart here. Many of us already know how to graph y equals square root of x, but just in case we can make this table. We can begin with an x value of 0, so then the y coordinate would be the square root of 0, which of course is 0, so that just means we have a point at the origin. We can next plug in 1 for x, the square root of 1 is equal to 1, so we would have the point 1 comma 1. And then we may choose 4 next, just because it's a perfect square. So if we take the square root of 4, we get 2. And therefore, at 4 comma 2, we're going to have another point. And there are, of course, more points, but that might suffice to get a good sense of what the graph looks like. So we'll connect these points, and the graph kind of goes off infinitely in that direction. And then, of course, we have the point 3 comma 0, which lies on the x-axis at this location right here. So we'll label the coordinates as follows. There's going to be some point on the graph of y equals square root of x that's going to be closest to this point. Just by eyeballing, we might imagine that it lies approximately here. That looks to be about the point that would be closest to 3 comma 0. So for now, since we don't know the coordinates of that point, we might call this x comma y. And what we're trying to do again is to minimize the distance from this point to the point 3 comma 0. So we could draw a line that connects these two points and perhaps we can just call that distance D. And that's the distance we're trying to minimize. Now some of us know that there's a formula that gives us the distance between two points. But if we didn't know that formula, what we could do is draw a right triangle and then use Pythagorean theorem to get this distance. So briefly, if we extend a line straight down here, we would get ourselves a right triangle. Now, this distance right here is simply the y-coordinate of this blue colored point. So we could call that distance y. This distance right here is a little trickier for us to find, but we might notice that from the origin to the point that's marked in red, that that distance, of course, is three units. We might also notice that from the origin to that location is simply the x-coordinate of the blue point. So that distance can be represented as x. Therefore, since the distance from here to here is 3, and the distance from here to here is x, this distance right here would simply be 3 minus x. So that could be appropriately labeled on our diagram as 3 minus x. Now Pythagorean theorem tells us, of course, that 3 minus x squared plus y squared would give us that distance squared. So right now we have a nice equation that gives us the distance that we're trying to minimize, but the problem is it's in terms of two variables. It's in terms of both x and y. And we want to try to get our distance equation in terms of just one variable. Now, fortunately, we have this constraint above here. It tells us that the y-coordinate of this blue point is equal to the square root of x. So what we'll do is we'll make a substitution. Right here, where this y is, we can go ahead and substitute in the square root of x. And what that does, of course, is it gives us our distance equation in terms of a single variable x. We're going to want to simplify this equation. So, of course, the square root of x squared, if we simplify that, that just gives us x. The 3 minus x squared, we can foil that out, as they say. So 3 minus x times 3 minus x. And as we multiply that out, we'll do 3 times 3, which gives us 9. 3 times negative x is a negative 3x. 3 times negative x again is negative 3x. And then we have negative x times negative x, which is positive x squared. Continuing on simplifying, we can combine these like terms here. This will give us 9 minus 6x plus x squared plus x. And then indeed, we have these like terms right here. So putting this all together, we're going to have 9 minus 5x plus x squared. 
and this will give us our distance squared. Now, we're trying to minimize the distance, which means we're going to need to compute the derivative. There's a couple of ways we could proceed here. Unfortunately, our distance is currently squared. So one thing we could do is take the square root of both sides, but the problem with that is if we did that, then we'd end up with the square root of this large quantity of nine minus five x plus x squared, and doing the derivative of that would be rather messy. So a lot of books will encourage you to consider the following, that in order to minimize d, it will be sufficient to minimize the quantity d squared. So in, instead of square rooting both sides to solve the equation for distance, we can actually leave the equation as it is and minimize d squared rather than d. They're going to turn out to be equivalent because the smaller you make d squared, the smaller you also make d. So there's a nice sort of shortcut here that you can just keep the function as it is, and we can take the derivative from this point forward. So if we take the derivative on the left side, the derivative of a constant, of course, is zero. The derivative of negative 5x is negative 5, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. And then over here, we could just perhaps say d squared prime to represent the derivative that we just computed. Now, you may know after taking the derivative, you have to find the critical numbers of your function, and you do that by setting the derivative to zero. So we'll have negative 5 plus 2x is equal to zero. We can add the 5 over to the other side and then divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals 5 halves. Now, we do have to prove that this indeed minimizes the distance. And one way of doing that is by considering the second derivative test. Now, the second derivative test would, of course, require us to find the second derivative. So looking back at the first derivative, we're going to go ahead and compute the second derivative. So this would be d squared double prime. We know the derivative of negative 5 is 0, and then the derivative of 2x is 2. Notice that the second derivative is positive no matter what the x value is. And we know that when the second derivative is positive, that that means that the curve is concave up. And so we can indeed see that at our critical point of x equals 5 halves, that our curve, our, our distance squared curve, if you will, will indeed be concave up, and that proves that we indeed have a minimum at 5 halves. So this is the correct x-coordinate that minimizes that distance. We, of course, need the y-coordinate as well. But remember, the y-coordinate was equal to the square root of x. So now all we have to do is plug 5 halves in for x, and that's going to give us the y-coordinate. So it ends up being the square root of 5 halves. So technically, your coordinates are 5 halves comma square root of 5 halves. You could also simplify the square root of 5 halves if you so desired. We'll do that for a moment here. So the square root of 5 halves is equivalent to the square root of 5 over the square root of 2. You probably learned that you can rationalize the denominator by multiplying the bottom and the top by the denominator. So you end up with the square root of 10 over the square root of 4, but the square root of 4 is just 2. So an alternative way of expressing your answer would be 5 halves comma square root 10 over 2. Either one of these would be acceptable.